Continuing in the milieu, every year since 1994, the Orwell Prize has awarded works which come closest to his idea of artful political writing. This year's winners were announced on Orwell's birthday in June. And oddly enough, in both the fiction and non-fiction categories, the prize was awarded to books that focused on the Northern Ireland's troubles. For fiction, it was former Men Booker winner Milkman by Anna Burns, while Patrick Redden Keefe's Say Nothing won for Best Nonfiction. Now, to tell us more about the intertwined relationship between politics and literature, novelist and literary critic Jude Cook joins me. Jude, welcome to Showcase. Um, so tell me, why Hello. do you think two books on Northern Irish Troubles won uh, the Orwell Prize this year? Well, I, I mean, one of the answers is that it's just coincidence because there are two different uh, bodies, uh, uh, judging bodies um, for, for, for each prize, for political fiction and for non-fiction. Um, but I think uh, the, the real answer is in the age of the writers. If you look at Anna Burns, who wrote the winner uh, for fiction, Milkman, um, and David Keenan, who also wrote a book about the troubles uh, for the good times, they both grew up in the 70s and 80s. So their novels are seeing... Uh, a time of extreme political upheaval um, and danger in Northern Ireland through the point of view of a child or an adolescent. And, uh, adolescent, and this is what gives them their force, I think. Mm, and also, I think it sort of shows that uh, literature, fiction, writing responds to politics in a slower, more subtler way, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, uh, you know, we're still writing, reading fiction about the French Revolution. Uh, you know, over 200 years later. Um, so I, I, I feel that, that, that really, you know, it's a, these are subjects that we'll never, never stop uh, thinking and writing about. Um, and it is, I think one of the questions you asked me earlier was that it's not timely, but it is timely. There's still factional unrest in Northern Ireland. Uh, a journalist, Lyra McKee, was killed there a few months ago, tragically. Um, so it's still something that needs to be urgently addressed in political fiction. In a recent piece, you mentioned um, a growing desire by readers to explore political issues through novels. So what can political fiction offer to readers that non-fiction cannot? I think political fiction gives you uh, the experience of what it's like to be, to live during those times. Um, and it, it, it teaches us empathy, which is fiction's great strength. I think with non-fiction, you have the facts, the statistics, but fiction puts the reader right there in the middle of the French Revolution or the Troubles, um, and you, you, you can feel what it's like to be there in those times and share the moral choices that those characters have to make. Um, uh, Sir Philip Sidney, who, in his Defence of Poetry, said that, that uh, poets give us a golden world, whereas history just gives us what men did. And I think... Uh, in terms of fiction, we need that golden world, not an idealised picture of, of, of events, but something that can inspire us and make us engage with political events. I understand it's a golden world, and uh, that's, a, that's a great saying, by the way, but the world is already heavily politicised. Why should I read a novel about politics? Why, instead of trying to escape this politicised world? Well, I suppose, I suppose the answer is in, in, in the question is that we are bombarded with news all the time with you know, politics, CNN, um, and I think uh, what, what happens with, with fiction is that it allows you to stand back and see the, the long perspective. Um, especially in the last five years, we've had you know, the, ri the resurgence of the right in, in Europe and across the world, um, the rise in Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Um, it's very hard for us to, to, to compute that and know what to do about it. How much power do you think fiction has? I mean, can political fiction instigate change, for example? I think it can. The great example is Dickens with Nicholas Nickleby in the 1850s, and his great novel, uh, Precipitated Educational Reform. Um, you know, it can happen. 1984 is another example. We talk about Orwellian nightmares. Um, and, you know, I think totalitarianism is still going strong, and we need those books to, to keep pushing against uh, power. Novelist and literary critic Jude Cook, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. Thank you.